The iPad was promised to us as a new kind of computer. What's a computer? One that would be super portable, be easy to use, and have basically endless battery life. And while it does have a place in the household as a consumption device, think like YouTube video watching or playing casual mobile games, it never really became that productivity powerhouse that Apple has tried to convince us that it is. That said, if you have an iPad lying around and it's your primary computing device and you want to try and learn how to program or even get your ideas onto the screen and start prototyping and tinkering with the idea of game development, it's not a complete waste of time. It is challenging and the, the options are not vast and there's not a ton of stuff out there, but there is some stuff. So I wanted to take a couple minutes today and just go through what I found to be the available options if you want to develop games on an iPad right now. Let's start with the first one, which would be the native option, Swift Playgrounds. I've talked about Swift Playgrounds on this channel a few times. It is something that you can use to make games on an iPad. It's not perfect. It's core competency is Swift UI, which is like somewhat limiting for games. You can make like small ones. You can inject a sprite kit view into a Swift UI app using your iPad, which does open it up a little bit more because then you do have the option to add some physics and stuff like that to your game. But sprite kit in general is still not the go-to platform for game development. The benefit of using Swift Playgrounds though is that you can publish directly to the App Store with the iPad. You don't need to export it out and then publish it some other way. You can just do the whole thing right on the iPad and you can be done, which is fantastic if you want to go that route. But it is still a prototyping first type of app. Odds are you're not gonna want to publish anything that you're making with the iPad to the App Store. It's just, it's really not built to be that thing. So if we're talking about prototyping and learning and just getting ideas on paper and just to see if they work before you invest more time or money into making it a reality, then there are some other options out there. One of the ones that comes to mind is an app called Hyperpad. Now this is a no code solution. And while that doesn't give you the flexibility or the freedom to do everything you might want to do, it is a great way to get started and again, see those prototyped ideas flowing and really just make sure that the idea that you have is uh, something that is worth developing further in maybe a different platform or a different way. Hyperpad is really casual. So even if you have like a big idea, you're not gonna be using Hyperpad for that. But from uh, just a fun way to get some ideas and get comfortable with game development and the many other things that go into making a good game other than just writing code. Hyperpad is an option and it's really fun and it works really well on an iPad. Another interesting approach that I've seen thrown around in some of the Reddit forums that I've perused or whatever, this particular suggestion was kind of interesting to me where if you're artistically inclined, you could use Procreate to create your game art and then you can use Scratch on your iPad and you can make little Scratch mini games now you will need to use the web for Scratch because uh, there is no native uh, iPad app for Scratch. There is one for Scratch Junior though, more on that in one second. Basically the idea of Scratch though, is that you just have a drag and drop kind of editor. It's very easy to use. Again, very casual, very simple, but you're starting to get that just idea flowing and you're seeing the theme here. It's, the iPad is not a productivity device. It is a good consumption device, and it's great for prototyping. It is a, a great, fast way to get ideas on paper, iterate over designs really quickly, just because of the way that you input into it. I think that's one of the key benefits here. Another similar app would be Tinkercad, which also does uh, a lot of the same stuff. You can use Tinkercad for 3D modeling as well. Um, so there's that. But back to Scratch Junior, which does have an iPad app and is great uh, for younger children. Um, they advertise ages five to seven, which is fantastic if you have a young child in your family that is interested in getting into this kind of um, a hobby or whatever, right? Because this does take these concepts of coding and distills them down into something that's a little more accessible for 
that young uh, budding interest in but programs. there is a more full-fledged option on the horizon and no i'm not talking about xcode on the ipad that still has no timeline what i'm talking about is for game developers this guy miguel de casa has done it he has made a port of godot that runs on an ipad and he's done so in a way that looks just fantastic now I don't have access to the beta. So what I'm gonna do is link a couple of videos in the description where you can check it out for yourselves and just see how much work he's done. Uh, because it not only is Godot on an iPad, but it looks like it belongs on an iPad. So the two videos I'm gonna link are the one where he's on stage talking about this uh, and kind of everything behind the scenes and whatnot. And then there's an another video made by Games From Scratch, with, which I think does a great job of providing kind of an overview of the beta itself, how it works, what it looks like. And he does a much better job than I could ever do of describing it, uh, not to mention he has access to the beta, I don't. I'll also put a link to where you can sign up for the beta if you're interested in doing that as well. Uh, down in the description. It is built in Swift UI, which I think is fantastic. It looks awesome. This is the start of what game development or programming on an iPad could look like in the future. It's not going to be uh, perfect. There are several limitations. Buggy, it's in beta, you know, you get the fair warning, it's not finished. The point I'm making here is that if you have an iPad and you don't have a computer, you are not just out of luck. You can get ideas on paper, you can prototype your ideas, and you can see if they're fun, if they're interesting, because just because you have an idea doesn't mean it's a good game. There are lots of ideas that in your mind, they sound really great. But once you start putting them down and start actually playing at the mechanics of it, you find out very quickly that it's not the game that you thought it was. And you're having a fast, easy way of doing that, even if you are a seasoned programmer. Having a fast, easy way to do this that's accessible and portable and low friction to enter into the ideation of a, a game, I think is fantastic. And the more ways we can get that, the better games that we will get in the end. So anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.